Welcome to the final in our series of upgrading to the next generation PC. The PC is built but we've done a lot since then. We've tested different video cards, RAM and CPU, not actual models but we've overclocked and underclocked yeah. um, to see if you have a mid-range product compared to the high-end product, what do you really get out of it? The benchmark we're running here is the Crysis batch file benchmark that's actually built into the game itself. It's, the batch file is easily to run and if you have a copy of the game you can run it on your own PC at home. So what we've tested are two different NVIDIA cards, the 260 which is pretty much their mainstream card at the moment. It's a $250 card, is that right? That's yep. correct. And the 280 which starts at 450 could be more. Mm -hmm. So. The, with the average frames per second, the 280 did come out on top. Right, but what, we, uh, what you pointed out to me, Fiona, was actually the minimum frames per second, the SLI configuration, so two 260s in the SLI mode, actually gave us the highest minimum frame rate. That's fairly important, that's basically during the ma most amount of stress where the, the minimum frame rate hits. And anything below 30 frames per second, you're going to notice. And in this case, um, this is a very, very st stressful benchmark uh, and it's and stressful for a reason, so it can actually push this uh, system to its limits. But uh, the SLI configuration actually really held its own there, although the, the uh, average frame rate was 0.5 of a frame difference, which isn't, isn't really anything. You're never going to notice that in the real world. Um, the minimum frame rate uh, was 5 frames yeah, higher than higher the 280. Yeah. The next benchmark we're running here is a built-in benchmark in Company of Heroes. And now, if, uh, this is another DirectX 10 benchmark, and we just hit performance uh, test in the graphic settings. And as you can see, everything's fairly high, um, and memory usage is fairly low there. We're not using a lot of our 4 gig of RAM. Uh, model details uh, are just over halfway, so we're going to run the performance test. That's basically the best playable settings I've found in the game. If you go much higher than that, i found our minimum frame rate was dropping way too low and you're getting a lot of glitches even in real world gameplay, not just benchmarking. So to test DDR2 compared to DDR3, you actually have to swap the motherboard out. That's right. I swapped over to a X38 Intel chipset motherboard from our Enforce chipset motherboard. Um, and basically, uh, the, the X38 is an older chipset, but it does support DDR3. And what did you find? What was the difference between well, DDR2 and DDR3, starting with um, 4 gig? Well, at 4 gig, what we found uh, in this particular benchmark, there was 7 frames per second difference. Um, that's, again, it's not a great deal, but it is noticeable. Um, again, there's other variances, the chipset drivers and stuff like that may make, make up for part of the difference as well. But DDR3 definitely is faster, gave us higher CPU benchmarks and some of the other, other benchmarks we ran as well. So the actual CPU score went up as well because the memory speed was faster. Right. The surprising thing was though, in most of these benchmarks that we're running, we really didn't see a lot of difference going from 2 gig to 4 gig of DDR3. Actually, uh, the, in this particular benchmark, the uh, DDR2 score was 113 frames per second on average, and the DDR, uh, sorry, the, the 4 gig uh, score was 112 frames per second on average. So it was actually a little bit lower, just one frame. But uh, what I did notice in real world gaming, uh, testing things like uh, MMO games like World of Warcraft, the 4 gig definitely made a big difference in, uh, in big area scenarios like uh, AV battlegrounds in, uh, in World of Warcraft where there's lots of characters on the screen. So the, more, the, the higher amount of RAM definitely makes a difference there. But for most of the first person shoot 'em up games, 2 gig is going to be more than enough in most cases. The last test we're talking about today is actually a th synthetic benchmark called 3D Mark Vantage. This is a program you can download for free off the internet to test your own PC. Um, there is uh, registered versions of it as well which just provide you with more information. We're actually using a professional copy here to allow us to export all the data into uh, other formats. But uh, what we're testing, the difference here is what we're going to be talking about now, the difference in CPU speeds. We've talked about graphics cards and RAM, now it's time uh, to have a look at our CPU. What we did with our 3 GHz 68, QX6800 uh, CPU was overclock it to 3.67 GHz, which is what it's running at the moment. The CPU fan is going like crazy and the core, cores are currently running at about between 90 to 98 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty hot. That CPU fan is going nuts there, screaming. 
But the, um, the interesting thing is, is the lack of performance increase. Now, uh, although the scores in 3D Mark um, show us the GPU scores uh, are perfectly even between the two different speed grades, but the CPU scores jumps up from 35,000 uh, up to 38,000 in the CPU score. But um, the price difference between this, this range of CPU is massive, isn't it, Fiona? Yes, it is. I mean, it's certainly not worth that relatively small jump in 3D mm -hmm. Mark score. In most of the games like um, Crisis and Company Heroes, we only really saw a couple of frames difference in those benchmarks there. It's obvious that the bottleneck, even though we've got some of the latest graphics cards in the market here, the bottleneck is still the GPU You're and not, not the CPU. So definitely if you're looking at buying a new CPU for your system, do not buy the latest and greatest CPU out there. Go mid to high range, a couple of speed grades down from the fastest thing available at the moment. Yes, there's going to be tests out there that will show you that, you know, show you that CPU faster, but in real world gaming, it's pretty obvious that uh, the CPU is not going to cut it. Value for money, the two 260s um, at $500 for roughly $500 for two of those cards. And you don't need to buy them at the same time. You no, that, that's what I think is really quite attractive of SLI. So if you go for a 280 now, you're probably going to spend $450 and probably more, actually. And the other thing, you know how hard it was to get that 280 card in this country? Yeah, that's the We got like one of the only the card cards. available. Yeah. Now, yes, single card solution, it basically definitely holds it, uh, its own against two. Uh, 260s, um, no doubt, but it's around the same price. It, it does. I mean, it is slightly, you're talking, you know, six frames here and whatever, yeah, yeah. slower. Yeah, That's not, not, huge, not too noticeable, but I mean, it, it is there, definitely. Yeah, yeah, there is a slight performance advantage of SLI. So, mid range CPU, SLI configuration on a mid range. Uh, gaming card, so the, uh, the, the in this case it was a GeForce GTX 260. But you know the, the 200, two, two to three hundred type dollar card uh, is what you want to be looking at in a multi GPU configuration, whether it be SLI or even ATI um, cross bias yeah. technology as well. They all provide similar types of performance relevance compared to their higher end uh, counterparts. Yeah, and if you're an FPS gamer, don't bother with 4 gig of RAM, but if you do play MMO games, mm -hmm. you will notice a difference. So we hope you've enjoyed our upgrading to the next generation PC video series. I'm going to definitely enjoy it in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that one's moving into the house and it's staying out in the office. So we've been kind of general in what we've talked about That's to right. a certain extent with um, choosing the components. That's because we wanted to make this video series, you know, relevant, you know, Technology. at least for the next year. All this year. stuff changes so quickly. The graphics card models and the CPU models constantly change. So, but if you are upgrading your PC, check out our written guides on TK Arena as well. We have a guide for ATI GPUs, NVIDIA GPUs, AMD CPUs, Intel CPUs. Basically, gives you an overview of their product range and where their models fit into the marketplace. So check them out the next time you're going to upgrade. The products in this video were sponsored by Altec Computers, MSI Computer Australia and Thermalright.